got to tell you, I'm looking over here at our next congresswoman, Jen Kiggy. She's got a really nice vest on. How about that? Woo, woo, woo. Hey, thank you all for coming out. Thanks for coming out and standing up for Jen. And does it feel familiar? I mean, you can see what's happening right now. All of a sudden, momentum has swung big time. And by the way, you can tell it has. You can tell it has because the other side's gone crazy. <laughs> Just gone crazy. Let's arrest parents. <laughs> let's arrest parents. Let's, let's yell at Jen for two hours during a debate. Let's say ridiculous things about Kevin McCarthy. I mean, this is just unbelievable. They have lost their minds. And we know that because they can see it slipping away. They, they didn't think they were going to be in this race. By the way, it kind of reminds me of somebody I ran against last year. <laughs> you know, he does. They just, they, they can't believe that voters are going to line up and say, you're fired, because that's what's happening right now. Voters are lining up and saying, you're ti we're tired of it, you're fired. I mean, what, what, what we've seen all around this commonwealth and what we've seen around our country has been this recognition that what, what we're getting from the left liberal progressives is just chaos, just absolute chaos, and everybody's tired of it. So we've had it. So we are about to make a change. And one of the things that's going to be right at the top of the list is the change that's going to be made in the second congressional district in Virginia when we elect Jen Kiggins. I mean, isn't it amazing? So all these smart pundits, you know, those people that pride themselves on knowing more about this than, say, the voters, they, they always come out and say, oh, no, that's, she's going to get, you know, Elaine Laura is going to get reelected. Terry McCall is going to win. Glenn Youngkin can't. Oh, they're going to get. They forget to do one important thing. Ask the voters. And voters keep standing up and saying, no, we are so tired of the mess. Because you know what? In Virginia, in Virginia, we have figured out who we are. We have figured out that, no, we are not blue. No, we are not deep blue, but we are red. And that's what's happening every time. I still, I still can't for the life of me figure out who, I, who thought that the, the, home of, the home of Thomas Jefferson, the home of George Washington, the home of James Madison, the state that actually breathed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness into our nation was going to do anything else other than recognize that we are going to vote for common sense. We're going to vote for freedom. We're going to vote for liberty. And we're going to make sure that we are empowering parents. And that every single day is lifting Virginians up, bringing us together. And we're about to do it again on November the 8th. And there is going to be another huge red wave across the Commonwealth and across the nation. And Jen Kiggins, let me just tell you what's going to happen. Jen Kiggins is going to have her surfboard. She's going to be on top of that wave. She's going to be carrying that plane ticket with her. She's going to land in D.C. and hand a one-way trip to Nancy Pelosi to go back to California. That's what she's going to do. One-way trip. Go. Go. We've had it. We have just had it. Friends, we just see the chaos that they are sowing every morning. I mean, Elaine Loria, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden are, are like agents of chaos. <laughs> Everything they do, they make it worse. You know, they, they sit there and say, well, inflation's terrible. Let's print more money and have a lawn party and talk about it. We all of a sudden see our border, which is a national catastrophe. It's a crisis. Fentanyl coming over the border like crazy. Every single state in America is a border state. 74% of our overdoses come from fentanyl in Virginia, and we know right where that comes from. It comes from a wide open border. They sit there and think that they're going to help in crime, and they demoralize law enforcement. And then this morning, this morning we announced the latest NAEP scores, the national report card on how our children are doing, and the just amazingly dumb decisions that have been made for a long time in Virginia, the other side lowered standards. They told everybody, don't worry, we're going to cut what it means to pass, and everybody's going to do better. Don't worry. We're going to expect less and get more. We, in fact, don't believe in transparency. We're going to tell parents their kids are doing well when they're not. 
I mean, friends, this is what the other side believes, and, and truly they believe it. And you cannot fathom that someone sits there at night and says, I'm going to lower expectations for kids. We're going to keep our schools closed, and they're going to do better. And sadly, this morning, we found out yet again that they haven't been doing better. And so we have got to get people in office who understand what it means to bring common sense back into the room. And let me tell you, that big white building in Washington, the Capitol and the White House, both need a big dose of common sense. And that's what Jen Giggins is going to bring. Hey, let's be real. Elaine Laura, Loria votes with Nancy Pelosi 99% of the time. 99% of the time. She stood up and she said that President Biden and Vice, Pre Vice President Harris have done great things for the nation. I mean, what is she seeing? <laughs> what is she seeing? This, this, is, this is what we've had, and that's why we're going to have a management change, and we're going to have new representation. And i got to tell you, this is going to be special because you can see it happening. You know, there's this... There's this, uh, it's like a NASCAR race. I kind of like NASCAR. So there's a NASCAR race, and Elaine Laurie is kind of puttering around the final curve. And here comes Jen Kiggins on the outside. And she's roaring up on the outside. And what happens on that last curve when it gets close is there's some paint scraping going on, right? And, and Elaine Laurie is trying to figure out what to do. She's desperate. And she runs these crazy negative ads. She screams at everybody all the time. She says things that are unbecoming to an officer. And you sit there and you scratch your head and said, why in the world did we elect her in the first place? And guess what? We didn't. We didn't. And our job is to make sure that it does not happen again. It does not happen again. It's time for a management change, you know, because it really it does all come down to freedom and liberty. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to these basic principles in America today that government is supposed to be for you. It's supposed to be of you. It's supposed to be by you. It's supposed to represent you, not tell you what to do all the time. And that's what's happened in this nation is this complete, complete 180-degree uh, uh, move away from freedom and liberty and into elitism telling you what you should do. And by the way, in Virginia, we know a lot about freedom and liberty. We know a lot about it, and we should never forget it. Those immortal words written by Thomas Jefferson that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that we are endowed with certain unalienable rights by our, by our Creator. And among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Friends, this is our moment to stand up yet again and, and, and finish chapter two of our three-chapter book. Chapter one was sweeping the races last year and taking our house back. Chapter two is taking back our Congress. And chapter three is taking back our Senate and the state next year and making sure that John Crossgrove is in the majority. That's what we got. You see... You see, these rights, this, this life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are rights that were not given to us by a king. They're not bestowed upon us by elites in Washington or Richmond. These are rights that are handed to us by God Almighty, and they are ours, and we have to stand up and defend them. And what that means is we have to go do the work. Because we've been here before now, remember? We were right here last year, right here, pulling out ahead. We know what it feels like, but the key thing now is to go do the work. Even the rooster knows that. It's time for that wake-up call to go do the work. And the work, is, the work is now us, right? Jen's been doing the work. She's been campaigning. She's been out there spreading the word, getting people fired up. Now it's us. Last year, working the polls, we had 5,000 volunteers. Let me say that again. Last year, working the polls, we had 5,000 volunteers election officials, poll watchers, people handing out sample ballots. We had more volunteers working, phones, knocking doors, getting votes out than anybody can ever remember. We've got to do it again. And so you all have a job to do. And your job is really straightforward because you did it last year, so just dust off the scorecard and do it again. you got to go get 10 friends, 10 friends who will go vote. Make sure they're going to vote the right way. But get 10 friends and get them out to the polls and you put, their list, you put your list together and you call them up and you say, hey, Mary, have you voted yet? No, we'll vote tomorrow. By the way, the polls, polls are open. And if you can, leave here and go vote. So, Mary, have you voted? No, I haven't. We'll vote tomorrow. Call Mary tomorrow night. Mary, have you voted? No, I haven't. Go pick Mary up in your car and take her to the polls. We've got to get the vote out. 
we did something so special last year. We had more turnout, and the more turnout voted for the Republican candidates. That's what we did that was so unexpected last year, and we're going to do it again. Ten friends to the polls. Each one of you is responsible. There was a group, huge group Saturday night that's doing the exact same thing. We're going to roll through the second, and we're going to get the ten friends of Jen out to vote. That's number one. Listen, the second thing we're going to do is just pray down the stretch, just like we always do. We're going to come together in a way that unites Virginians, not Republicans versus Democrats, but Virginians on what's right. And we know what's right. We know what's right. We know we have to get, we have to get uh, financial discipline back into Washington. We know that we have to go to work with common sense solutions because we are the winning team. And we're the winning team because we've got the best ideas, we've got the best solutions to these tough problems we're the winning team because we understand that we, stand, that we must stand up for safe communities and strong families. We're the winning team because we know that low taxes and low regulations buoy business as opposed to smash it. We're the winning team because we value American-made products. We're the winning team because we know that there is peace through strength, not weakness through weakness. We're the winning team because we understand that freedom and liberty are those ingredients that translate into unbridled opportunity for all Virginians and lift up everybody. This is the formula for the winning team. And guess what? We know one more thing, that parents matter and we're never going to replace parents in their children's lives. Never. Never. So we got to go do the work. We got two weeks, two weeks to lace up the shoes and get this done. And when we get this done, when we in fact recognize that on November the 8th that we have a new congresswoman, Jen Kiggins, that we in fact see the majority in our Congress in Washington flipping, that we in fact know that Nancy Pelosi is going back to California for good, that we in fact see across this nation Americans standing up and voting for conservative Republican candidates who will lead, who will lead, who will not find ourselves at moments where we're scratching our heads saying, well, how in the world did that happen at my school? I didn't have a say. No, no more. We're not standing up for it. And when we're all together on, no on November the 9th and we're looking back at this last two weeks, please don't say, I wish I had. Ten friends, a sign in your yard, a bumper sticker, a hat, a red vest. Put it on. Let's go. Let's get this done and elect Jen Kiggins, the next congresswoman from the 2nd District in the Commonwealth of Virginia. God bless you. Come on now. Let's get it done. Let's get it done.